Yeah, you know, that should do it, is it? Is it recording? I don't know, it doesn't. Yep, it's recording. Yes, it is, very good. I see the light. I see the light. <sighs> okay, no That's tree sprouting in my head, I'm cool. <clears throat> Lettuce. Lettuce. Hi, Paul. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> who are you? Who am I? Yeah, who are you? I <clears throat> am Sarah Liljegren, and I am a yogi. And that, I shouldn't start with that. That's Why not, not entirely who I am, but that's how I met you. Um, I was a yoga school. I went to yoga school, became a yoga teacher, and discovered embodied yoga principles through the Embodiment Podcast. And you were like episode five or something. And um, I became fascinated with this idea, many ideas that you shared through um, an interview that I've been thinking about for years now. And um, I'm here to ask you some questions about humanity and the body. And um, I'm a student of yours. And what else? And a professional in your own right, and working to save the world, which we need more of. And I'm working to save the world. We really are. Yeah. If I can get myself together, which obviously I am. Look at this professional outfit. Clearly, I have my shit together. Clearly. Clearly. Who am I? Who are you? Who am I? Well, <laughs> the first thing I often say when I start workshops, I don't say it anymore. I used to tell a joke saying, I'm here to shake things up. But it's too corny, it's a reference to my Parkinson's. I don't mind having Parkinson's, one of the things that I've shared with a lot of people. Shaking is mandatory, suffering is not. I don't tend to suffer, it doesn't really bother me. Just some things I shake at. So I'm first, as a presenter, as, as somebody you see visually, a shaker and a mover. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And then I am Paul Linden, that's my name. And uh, I've been doing Aikido for about 52 years now. I also have black belt in karate. I have, I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner. I've done a lot of different movement things for about 50 years. And my question has always been, what, what, is, what am I trying to become so that I can live the way I would wish to live? I didn't know that was my question at first, but as we talk, you'll see what that has meant to me. I have a PhD in physical education. I've, let's see what else have I done that's interesting that way. I've done a lot of different somatic modalities. My de definition of a somatic modality is it's a, it's a way of looking at the human being with a focus on the body, but not as dead meat or even live meat. Focus on the body as lived experience with the rules of consciousness and awareness and commitment and intention being how you analyze and put string things together so you can understand them and equally the objective scientific analytic process of looking at the body as a machine the bones and levers and muscles and such so i've put the two together <clears throat> to answer some fundamental questions i think the two together with the martial arts gives me a unique vantage point which we'll, we'll discuss and i think i'll try to convince people why it's a useful way to think and, and live i hope so yeah i love what you said about the exploring so the, exploring how to be so I can live the way I want to live. Yes. That resonates with me so deeply. That's part of why I'm doing this, because I want to develop who I am in a way that is, is yeah, well not, hopefully not as suffering, yeah. like you said, but um, also inspires others, and so we can change the world. Yes. The, the slogan I use to summarize everything I'm doing, power without love is brutality. Love without power is ineffective. If you push away your love because you have to be strong to handle life, you, you become a perpetrator. If you push away your, your power to be loving, you, 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 be, you become a victim, or at least you can't help. So power has a bad name in our culture. I think love, as we typically think of it in our culture, should have a bad name. But uh, if you put the two together so they're essentially exactly the same and they're in sync because they're the same, then you get something that's a very different way of living. It's very challenging for people, and I want to get back to love specifically. 
um, but we're going to talk about power okay. a lot as well. Um, but starting <coughs> out with what you said, the, the body isn't just a meat suit. The Embodiment Podcast, the slogan for that, which Mark Walsh being the the connector between yeah. us, um, mm -hmm. I think has done a lot of great, great work yes, in yes. teaching people that the body is more than a brain taxi. And that's, yeah. that was the slogan for the podcast. Like, if you believe your body is more than a brain taxi, um, this podcast is for you. And that and totally intrigued me because I think I was living in a way at the time that it was. And you'll see, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a thinker. I have questions that have no answers and have no right being answered, but I'm going to ask them anyway. That's okay. I'm so a thinker too. <laughs> this is where I started. Yeah. And I, I want um, to take this logical, see, I have all these questions written out because like, what is peace? Like, okay, <laughs> how are we going to answer that? But Let's start with the purpose for this project for me is based on the belief that humanity is worth believing in and that it's worth saving this broken society, mm -hmm. that we're worth that. Yes. And I think that's the, what I see to be the missing piece right now in that we see all these good things in the world. We also see reasons to tear down certain structures, um, but a lot of apathy just, and I, from my experience, it just, it stops me in my tracks from even trying. So. Is it apathy? What is it? What, how do you know what apathy is? And how would I know what you mean by apathy? Because I don't care. Because mm -hmm. I stop caring. And why do you stop caring? How does it feel to stop caring? It's just total collapse. It and what like do you collapse? My, I collapse my guts and my heart and my brain. And you're talking about the body. Right. Okay, so apathy is a state of the body in which you mm -hmm. let all the juice leak out. So there's no, no pressure inside to blow up the balloon and do anything. So you, what you need to overcome apathy is that internal strengthening. Is humanity worth saving? Well, let's put it this way. If I said peanut butter is definitely, objectively, the best food in the world, what would you say? I would say I agree. Well, okay, let's find somebody who doesn't. <laughs> what would they say? Um, that there's no way to prove that or that they that's would an say, opinion? I, like, I don't like peanut butter. I prefer to use almond butter. It's an opinion. Oh, that's good. Uh, a taste, a preference cannot be true or false. It can be healthful or unhealthful. You can lie about your taste. But the taste itself, if you like peanut butter, what can you say except I like peanut butter? So is humanity worth saving? I think it's like well, liking peanut butter. If you like it, it's, it's good. If you don't like it, it isn't. So I think the real question is how can we convince the people who don't care or actively don't want humanity to survive to feel different? Yeah. The word I'm picking up in that is feel. Yes. I think when I first came to you as a student, I couldn't feel my body. That's, that's a problem. Do you see that in a lot of people who come to you? That they I would say probably 11 out of every 10 people that come can't feel their bodies clearly or at all. Okay. I was about to ask why does that happen, but I think a lot of us know why that happens. But you see, what kind of people do you work with that, that you see that? In, like Almost do anybody. Yeah. Um, computer users who have to sit chained to their desk for eight hours a day, which they don't like. I see it in abuse survivors. I see it in survivors of medical procedures, car crashes, survivors of social situations, survivors of people who are living with people who hate them. Living with people who hate them, yeah. That is a fundamental <clears throat> problem in our, in our world. We're, we're not, we're taught that we're of no use. Hmm. And maybe the opposite of that is even worse. We're taught that we are useful as objects, but not as, as beings. Let's talk about language. Sure. And you say that <coughs> as objects, um, I remember <clears throat> it was actually yeah, through Embodiment Unlimited, some class. I think you were part of this class. Um, Mark was talking about the body as object, and someone in the chat was like, I refuse to see the body that way. 
And my first thought was, well, that's a bummer, because as an object, the body is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's great to be here as a thing that can move in this space. But, but what do you mean um, by that, the subjective versus objective use of the body? I'm not, um, I'm not sure I said use. Okay, not use, sorry. Uh, um, that's why we have video to find out what I really said. Yeah, Who what did cares? we say? <laughs> what I really mean is, if you, okay, if a, if a disembodied spirit came to me for a body work, which they don't do usually, they don't have any bodies, how would I know which side of the room it was sitting on? Wild guess. Right, but it, it may be a wrong guess. I wouldn't see it because it's disembodied. Now, if I'm disembodied and invisible, how does anybody see me? Mm -hmm. They don't. So, um, what was the question again? I, I was going off we were talking about, Oh, yeah. Oh, so we were talking about um, the body as object. Oh, yeah, and versus then, subject. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sub, uh, what is an emotion? What is anger, for example? <clears throat> Um, if you didn't know my work, what would you say anger oh, is? Yeah, right. I only know of emotions as what you define them as now. And I have a hard time with this, meeting other people to talk about emotional work, right. and they don't understand the way I see emotions. And so yes. it's, I'm getting confused on good, what, what even are emotions. Uh, okay, emotions, anger, for example. Show me anger. If you're going if if to show me what it I means, that's, show me, please. I did this. Do you, does this look angry? When I get angry, it tends, yeah. And when I get angry, is that different kind of anger? A different kind? I don't know. Is it different? Am I expressing it? it when looks, I do this. It looks different than mine, because yeah. mine is more of a collapse, and yours seems more of a forward. Yeah, okay. Then do we mean the same thing by the words? Same word, is, does it point to two different experiences? It points to two different experiences. Okay. I, was at, I was at a party the other night, and I was listening to a conversation. And it was about what constitutes a good run. It was a very weird conversation. It was a banker, uh, a, a, five ki a, a runner, and a salmon. And they all spoke about runs, but the salmon run is clearly different from a 5K run, very mm -hmm. different from a bank run. But they didn't notice that they were using the same word to point at different things. Right. You can imagine how confusing that, that conversation was. Sounds hilarious. Yeah, it was hilarious. If you ever not, if you ever tried to talk to a salmon about a salmon run, it's a, it's a, it's an experience. I was about to say, last time I talked to Sam, we didn't talk about runs. I'm so sure. next time I'll be sure to ask yes, about of the course. run. Yeah. But the point I'm making is, if you don't agree on what the word actually means, how can you be discussing anything? You're discussing different things without knowing it. And in particular, the meaning of a word is not found in the dictionary, mostly, I think. It's found in your body. If, if I say marshmallows, eh, and you say marshmallows, ah, what's the difference? Where is that happening, that difference between my eh and your ah? What's the difference? Yeah, the difference is you like and I don't. Yeah. And where do we do that? In our bodies. In our bodies. Can you see having a disembodied dislike of marshmallows? I doubt it. What would that even be? I do think we are just assuming communicate. I've, I've, yeah, we're just assuming communication is happening when we share words, and words are one of the, yeah. like you've said, they're, they're a terrible block to sh actually sharing what we... Well, I mean, they just happen to be the, more, the best things we've got going, but without them... It's true. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? So is humanity worth saving? Um, I see worth from a language point of view as a process, a preference by somebody. So you have to tell me, who are you asking that question of? And what do you mean, what, do, what, what would you see that would say, oh, this person worths it and this person doesn't? What would you see that tells you, if they both say the same thing, or even if they say opposite things, how do you really know what they're, what they're meaning except by watching their body? And what they do in the world. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's yeah. what their body is. Yeah. So is humanity worth saving? I would say that that worthing, if I may make up a new verb, is something that each individual has to do for themselves. So if, if I like vanilla ice cream, it doesn't mean you have to. If I like humanity and want to save it, it doesn't mean you have to. There's no objective you must. But there is a question about health. 
So if you, if you felt that eating fresh vegetables was delicious and you did it all the time, what would that do to your health compared to somebody who said, I don't like vegetables, I never eat them? Well, this gets back to the body as object. The body as an object needs, needs certain nutrients to function. Right, and the body and so they'll not. have a, the, health, the person who likes them will probably have a better time physically yes. than the person who doesn't. And the body has a part to play in values, morals, and worthing. So if the body says, you may, ah, hmm. then that's one approach. And the body says, you may, eh. And they're both possible. It just depends what your experiences have been, how you relate. I think this is coming back to how we relate to ourselves as a human. And last night when we were discussing this, mm-hmm. we were talking about self-worth. And mm-hmm. I noticed, in the, and when you told the story of you, a lot of the abuse survivors that you've worked with have the self-worth issue. issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I felt in my body when you said that, this sensation and like... I started tearing up, I got tight in my throat, and I've talked to a lot of people about this, and and growing up with such low self-worth and being told that humans are, humans specifically are evil, evil objects of sin. The body um, is, is an Excuse me, excuse me, what is sin, please? I don't know. If they didn't define it, then how can a they? A lot of people um, define it differently now that I've learned, and, but, but. What do they define it as? Sin. And what the, if you said, excuse me, it's a great preaching, you're preaching. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What is a sin? Um, they could name them, but what makes a sin? I feel thing like I sin? could define it religiously oh, or please. psychologically, but I don't, I don't. I, Try it. What Let's is see the, what I'm, I'm trying to think of like the verse. It's like, yeah, you're not meeting up to the demands of God. Or and you what are, are God's demands? Well, there's a whole book about them. No, there's a whole book written by people about them. Right. I don't notice that God himself wrote it. I don't know. That's what I don't know say. either. Yeah, it's, all, it's up to what you believe. It depends on what you believe. What depends? On whether you, who you believe on who wrote the books. Well, sure, but what you're saying is if the book says God wrote it and you believe the book, then you, then you have, it's a circular yeah. argument. Yeah. I believe the book because the book says I should believe it. And if the book says that humans are thus, I am now that thing, which yeah. is evil um, so, or, or worthless, you know. Yeah, but the um, question is not, are you worthless? To whom are you worthless? And for what? So this is what's important to differentiate, and this is what I want people to learn about, is, like, why that question, well, for me, just taunted, why, like, why, why it created a frozen state in me, because it is a loop thinking that doesn't, you never get to the bottom of why you actually believe you're worthless, you just believe you are, and that's just and the way things is, are. Is it a belief or a feeling? So we try something? It's both, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the safety contract? You have the right to say, stop, I don't want to do this at any point. I won't do anything truly harmful. And I expect you, I hope you won't harm me. Let's try something. Agreed. Okay. I'm um, in charge. You're, a, you're, a, you're, an applica- you're an applicant for a position in my company. And I'm interviewing you. And I say, your, your resume looks very good. I think you would be very good. I can certainly see a position for you under me. What happened in your body when I said that? <laughs> right, why? Because I'm somewhere trying to be professional. And I'm doing what? I'm attacking them, yeah. trying to attack your boundaries. Yeah. Is that good or bad? Feels bad. Then there's, there's the answer. If it feels bad, your body says, I don't like it. And it, it may not have a good response yet, because most people have not learned good responses. How long did it take me to communicate that I had evil intentions? And how, how long did it take you Quickly. to pick it up? Well, I, we did this exercise when I was your living student, uh-huh. have four years ago or something. Oh, was it? I don't know. Three years ago. And we did this, we did this exercise, and I, did, I have remembered this for years because I didn't realize that that connection that you're talking about between how long did it take you to realize your intention was bad? Like, a long time. It took me a long time to realize uh, that b- between me realizing that, oh, th- this person has bad intentions, and then my reaction, my response. How, how, how quickly did you have a response? I don't know if I had a response. I remember just being frozen. That's and a you response. Having, okay, okay. And then you asked me, like, how do you feel? And me saying, I don't feel good. 
but I can't tell you why and I can't move. Right, but you couldn't move because you were being threatened. Yeah. And you felt bad because you were being threatened. And you had no educated responses. You'd mm -hmm. come to the end of your resources, you'd sit there and take it, I guess. Yeah. So the point I'm making is that we don't need external lists of things to know what's bad. If, if I offer to rape you, you know that's bad right away without yeah. any, not because somebody taught it to you. The other side of the coin, though, is very real. If you know you're worthless, it's because somebody taught it to you. Okay. I don't think we come in feeling worthless. I don't think so either. I think if, if you're not valued by the people who created you, if, if you're unloved and not valued, not supported, you don't say, they're, they're screwed, why aren't they? I'm a lovely little kid, why aren't they supporting me? You say, there must be something wrong with me. And we learn that there's something wrong with us by being de-existified and unsupported. And then we go, go away with it. And how do, you, how do you change that in somebody? You can't argue them into feeling that they're worthwhile. Practice. Practice of what? Doing something different. Yes, what worthing. do you do? Practice and worthing. But what is worthing? Exactly, what is worthing? So that's what... Um, right, let me try something, may I? Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, this will be about a 20. Okay. What did what you do with your eyes? Then you knew I wasn't worthing you, I wasn't valuing you, I was going to hurt you, right? Yeah, because that's way above the, the 10 scale that we agreed on. I know, I agree. <laughs> I agree and you agree. All I'm trying to say is you know it right away. Yeah. You don't need theories or books. That's counter-cultural. Yeah, it sure is. And, and everything I've said about being raised, feeling worthless, being religious yeah. ties, ties to that was also countercultural within that subculture of, of, well, within religion, of believing you are the saved while simultaneously the damned. Does that make sense? If you weren't damned, you wouldn't need to be saved. Yeah. So how confusing is that? What I kind of message is that? I think it's not at all confusing because there's no message in it at all. How, how would you define what damned is? How would you define what saved is so you could tell the difference? By concepts of the afterlife. Okay, and so how do you like, tell whether any of those are correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think my measure is, what are, you, what are you doing right now? How does it affect your ability to act, to care, to feel community? And uh, anything that interferes with that is not good. I don't worry about abstracts. I never saw an abstract. This is Except vanilla abstract, of course. <laughs> My jokes are not great, but how do you know? Because you say, oh, that joke again. Uh, the, the being language, since we're talking about language, there's this, you've heard, I don't know if, I've definitely heard Mark say the kill your unicorns. Right. Um, I don't know if he got that from you, but that's a part of the embodied. I think he got some of it, but I never use that phrasing. Yeah. You don't use the word unicorn? Very rarely, except when I want to talk about something that we all know that doesn't exist. But in the Embodied Yoga Principles, which is the book it came from, yeah. um, or Making Yoga Meaningful as well, that's a good ebook. And oh. that uh, it's to, it's to y take this language, and he's speaking for facilitators, and, mm -hmm. but in general, why is it useful for people to take these so I should, I guess, first explain what these unicorns are, but it's the, inner, it's the jargon within like the subculture that we were talking about that allows us to create a shared language within a smaller group of people that you just somewhat understand what we're saying to each other by using this certain language. And then um, things like energy or what kind of space are we in today, um, things that don't actually... Say they're metaphors, what we're but they're mean. not literal. They're metaphors that really help people share a language in a small group, I've noticed. Yeah. And if they but have, they don't. You just assume what the other person is saying. Because you figure we're in the same group and we all have the same shared experiences, so the, our references must be similar. Yeah. Yeah, and so you, it's, it's somewhat of a feeling of, of calm and safety, like, oh, these yeah. people know what I mean, I know what they mean, we can just talk freely, and we, we know what we're saying. Sure. But with, with, uh, with me saying, as a yoga teacher and facilitator, you have to say what you mean. So why is it useful that, that everyday people should speak this way? 
by which way? taking the unicorns out of the, by killing your unicorns, right. or How, uh, being, take, being using clear and specific, using operational language. Right. Operational language, for those who don't know, is the use of language based on actions. So mm -hmm. if I want to talk about somebody who likes cherry pie, I don't say, do you like cherry pie? I say, how many slices of cherry pie have you eaten this month? How big were the slices? And if they eat many slices, I have a cutoff point. I say, that much and more defines what I mean by liking cherry pie. So that's an operational definition. If you define your terms clearly and concretely, then people know what you're talking about and they know whether they agree with you or not. If you don't, they can be misled or mislead themselves into thinking you're all on board with the same approach, but if the words are very different in their internal use, even though the same word is happening on the outside, then you don't really know what anybody means. I was at a, a discussion of Aikido once, and one of the people is stoutly maintaining that Aikido is a martial art. The other person is stoutly maintaining it was not. And all they had to do was define the terms, and they'd see they weren't talking about the same thing. They were talking about very different things. They agreed with each other, but it didn't sound like it. Mm. And the other thing is, aside from agreeing and not knowing it, you could be misled into believing things which simply aren't accurate or aren't helpful. So if somebody teaches you that such and such a word refers to something that comes out of the closet at night and strangles you, you won't like that word. So how you're taught the words and what the words mean to the people who spoke them and how they feel about you, that's all bound up in the values of the language. And it sounds what I, look, it sounds dangerous to me, like to just, to, just, to just blur language in a way that and then it's like it's almost like a false sense of security to mm -hmm. think you understand what someone is saying when they seem like they have good intentions, and then you just take that in as true yeah. um, and believe it, and and it becomes very con it sounds very confusing. One of the interesting ways of sorting that out is you give somebody like a pebble or a penny, each person in a group you give them one, and you say walk up to me and give me the pebble, lovingly, in the next trial angrily etc., etc., and you'll see a number of people doing very different things under the, under the rubric of the same word. So if I present a coin to you lovingly and I do this, very different if I do that. Mm -hmm. And if you watch people, you know what they're actually feeling. What they're doing is what yeah, they're feeling. Right. About that, you mentioned Aikido. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mentioned safety, so I want to talk about safety and perception. Mm -hmm. And I... I was thinking of, I never thought I would take a class with Wendy Palmer. I was hoping I would someday, but then when COVID happened, she did classes online, and so I was lucky enough to do some online Aikido classes with her, and it was awesome. Um, but she talks about, well, we talk about shapes as well. Um, you talk about the circle mm -hmm. and the triangle and the square. and There are other shapes as well. There are a few, but the, sh the shapes that she referenced those as movements like blending with the circle or moving in a direction as the triangle or staying really grounded as a square mm -hmm. and she said she doesn't actually teach the squares much anymore because it feels too fixed to the earth too fixed for what to like so like not adaptable not movable right yeah. yeah and she said that to stay movable and and yeah to stay movable to stay moving is more human I don't know if she used that word that to be more human, but that's how I, it feels more human to stay moving instead of fixed and frozen for me, because I mentioned feeling frozen, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I want to train that, so. Train what? The fixed, frozen state. I would imagine not. You're good at it, and it's probably got negative results, I even though it's got some positive yeah. results, too. I've practiced enough. Okay. The score. Shall we try some Aikido moves, and we'll see what they do? Yes, like? yes. Okay. Let me see here. It's not much of a problem. Probably the easiest thing to do, let's come over here and see if we're on the camera, are we? Yeah, I think we are, good. Mm -hmm. um, grab my wrist, please. Same hand, there, there we go, push. If I, just push straight at me. 
If I resist, what happens? One of us wins, one of us loses. Push again. What do I do? Why am I able to go through you now? Push. Know. What did you do? If I do this, I'm running into If I do this, hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm twisting your, your spine and your basic pelvic support. Hmm. If I do, hold on strong. If I do this, what happens if you let go? If I let go? I smack you. Yeah. If you don't let go, it's even worse. <laughs> I you know, smack I can, myself. You know, I can control your whole power. Yeah. Hold with both hands, please. Strong, brace. I'm going to do it. You, I'm going where you weren't. Yeah, because I've been fixed. I've yeah. been... The, the, you have been fixed. Eh? Well, that, we'll see if we don't <laughs> fix you. I'm still okay. strong. It feels to you, you're, a, you're an American, you're a strong human, you feel like opposition is where your strength is. If, you don't, if I don't oppose you, I move you. Hmm. Let's try something else. Hold strong. If I'll push down if I go up. Oppose any of my movements, please. Okay, there. Do I keep fighting it? No, you stopped. No, I didn't stop. Then I stopped. Push, grab, do something. You know? mm. I don't waste my energy resisting. Do something to me. Slowly. You know, keep going. So what happens? If I give you what you want, you're likely to be happy. Attack, do something. There you go. Very slow. I don't want to tell you. I'm going to attack you. May I? Yes. <laughs> what did you do when I raised my hand and scratched my head? Well, I kind of froze a little, and Is then that I helpful? giggled. No, frozen. It doesn't seem very helpful. Open your knees. Open your feet. Open your belly. Don't look up. Raise your head, please. Did you raise your head? I tilted it. You rotated it. Yes. It didn't go up any higher. The chin went up, and the occiput went down. My what we day. call in this culture raising the head is not possible. You know, this is raising the head yeah. to go up on my toes. <laughs> so don't raise your head when I attack. Just let your chin hang loose. Let your belly hang loose. Let your pelvic floor hang loose. Let everything be open and soft. Stand in a T stance. You'll find that technically helpful. Now I'm going to grab you. May I? Yes. Don't let me pull you toward me. What do you want to do? What are you trying to do? Go that way. Why? Because you said don't let me pull you this way. That <laughs> makes me want to go this way. Is there an easier way to not be pulled forward? Walk forward. Yeah. I there guess. you go. If you want, <laughs> I can't pull Now you. I can't be pulled. Okay. And what happens to me? I'm expecting the resistance, and there is none. Right. I lose my balance. Yeah, so that changes what you are. Yes. It doesn't change what I am. It changes what I do. So that, what is that? does that change you from being an attacker? No, I'm still an attacker. I want to hurt you. Yeah. But I can't because you're not fighting back. You're fighting forward, I guess. <clears throat> how you said something one time that I've remembered and told lots of people how you need it changes what it becomes yes may I choke you please yes and what did you do when I when I said that um stop breathing for a moment I guess well when we're practicing you always say yes because that's how you practice well mm -hmm. may I yes <laughs> what are you doing now where did uh, your awareness go <clears throat> that way why because I was being choked and I was retreating so can you retreat without, can you move backwards without retreating? Hmm. And don't move up. Okay. Look down and move backwards. What happens now? Take I feel own. like I have way more. Yeah, right. Do something. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Feel? <laughs> yeah. Now you yeah. can do something. <clears throat> I can, I'm paying attention to you, not back here. And are you paying attention to yourself as well? Yes. Good. Pay attention to only me. And I feel now, what can you do? Nothing. Pay yeah. attention to only you. It's a good meditation. You sit on the railroad tracks, the train comes. What do you do? You <laughs> should get off the track. Meditate. I'm yeah. meditating. Well, then in that case, you attend to a higher plane. <laughs> Splat. That's, that's why we meditate, right? Is to that's not why I meditate. Plane. Why do you meditate? Is this, so is movement a meditation? Is for this me, what yes. meditation is for you? Yes, it's to be present, full. I've had Parkinson's for 20 years. I, I can still stand on one foot, usually, mostly. Most pe people can't do it for long at all. Most parkies cannot do it at all. Mm -hmm. what, am I, what have I been doing for 20 years of time today? Not so good today. Yeah, that's a little better. What have I been doing for 20 years enables me to do this? Practice? Yes, what have I been, what have I been practicing? Moving. No, ju not just moving, moving in a specific way. Open, free, 
compassionate, stable. But if you put it all together, then you have something you can function with. How does safety line up with this? The safety of feeling. People talk about, I want my clients to feel safe. Yeah. Safety is not a feeling, it's a skill set. When people say this is a safe space. What do they mean? What do they mean? I am not going to attack you. Mm. Is that what safety is? It is, in a way, it's a, it's a children's view of safety. My parents won't attack me, so they'll protect me, so I'm safe. But if I attack you, then what, are you still safe? No. Then you never were as an adult unless you can. What do you do here? Uh, don't, <clears throat> don't try to remove my hands. That's okay. what you want to do, right? Well, this my is hands. like a karate okay, do self-defense it. thing. Do it. <laughs> if you remove my hands, what control do you have? Choke me, please. You can choke me a little hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep you under there and push you down on the couch. Oh. You don't remove the hands. The hands are your, your, your tools. You know where they are. Yeah. You gotta keep them where they are. Yeah. You, you absorb it. Relax. I'm gonna choke you. What do you have free? What can you reach? Everybody. Where can you move? I have my legs free. Here. No, don't, yeah. don't kick yet. Okay. Just push, push down on one elbow, up on the other, and turn. What happens? You take my balance. And I have your arms. Yeah, and you can have the rest of me too. And I have my full awareness of everything. Yeah. Of myself. Exactly. So, what is safety? Is safety in a boat the same as safety in an airplane? It's knowing how to protect yourself. Yes, generically, but there's a generic component of safety, which is to open the body, breathe, feel your grounding, etc., etc. The specific aspect of safety depends on the situation. So, if you're boating, safety on the water is very different from if you're flying an airplane. Yeah. Uh, vodka. Vodka. No, just water. So if people want safety, you have to say safety for what, in what situation, and then you have to provide them with the tools to create their own safety. If safety comes from the teacher or the therapist, it's provisional, provisional safety, it's crucial, it's necessary, but you're not done as the teacher so you can attack and they will, the client will stay safe by their own efforts. Um, <clears throat> safety and perception. Why would I perceive, I'm asking all, you, all these why questions. Why is but it good? Perceiving a threat and safety. I don't know, I see this relationship there between thinking that, feeling safe, mm -hmm. um, now I feel like when I when I feel safe when like the more I learned self defense and the stronger that I got and everything I just started to see less threats I started to perceive less threats in the you world. You weren't perceiving fewer threats. There were fewer behaviors on the other part of people on the part of other people that, that could threaten you. You were more competent to deal with other people's behaviors. And I see like this. Okay, say that again. I wasn't perceiving more threats. Okay, if you walk around looking for threats because you're scared, you'll see threats everywhere. And there will be threats because the people who are professionals on the street will say, oh, there's a scared one. I'll go do her. But if you're strong and stable, alert and calm, most people won't threaten you. And if they do, you can take care of them. So it's not that you're you're ch you change your perceptions. You've changed your skills. And when you change your skills, the whole world looks different. Yeah. Kannst du Deutsch sprechen? Yep. Die Beret at Ivrit? I don't know that one. Okay. If you can't speak a language, you can't function. Right. But if you can, if you have the skill, then it's not the, that the language is different. You can say things because you know that language. If I had the practice and the tools to learn that yeah, language, right. we would have had a different experience just now. Right, exactly. Right. If you know what the language means, then you understand what it means. If you can, uh, touch me slowly, I don't want to hurt you. Attack somehow. Yeah. If I, again, 
if I block on the way and stay, if you do this, you can go in through one eye out the ridge and then it across the other eye. So I have block and take your eyes out. Mm -hmm. If you know how to do that, you don't feel quite as safe, uh, quite as unsafe when somebody does that. Mm -hmm. Why? Not because you've changed your perception of it. Mm -hmm. You've changed your skill. You can deal with it differently. So I'm not terribly concerned with whether my clients feel safe. Of course, they have to to begin with. But I want them to be safe at the end. And graduation is when I, when I can attack them and mop the floor with me. Politely, of course, or I wouldn't survive. But uh, I had one woman come, who came to me, she, her, her cousins had raped her when she was young. And uh, she wanted to go through the stuff that I was doing. So at, at the, after the second lesson, her mother phoned me. I said, look, I can't talk to you without a specific release from your daughter. But I can talk to you gen generally about what I do. And she said, you touched my daughter. I said, yeah, I do that. I'm a, I'm a movement person. She said, I explained it. She said, well, it sounds logical. You're teaching her to be strong. And you have to touch her to do that. But if you hurt her, I have the cops on you so fast, you'll be, you, won't, you won't know what hit you. She came to the last lesson I did with the woman um, because I always invite people to bring anybody they wish, as, as an umpire or chaperone or whatever you call it for the last lesson. At a certain point, I said, okay, you are now ready to re-experience the attack and to change the outcome. So I pushed her down the floor, laid her on top of her, and she threw me off. And she said, let's do that again. And she threw me off with even, even more enthusiasm, more vigor. And then her mother had, had tears coming down her eyes saying, now I know why you practice, practice mm -hmm. and teach the way you do. It's, um, I think I have a copy. Up here, yeah, where is it? Up here somewhere. There it is. Yes, I think that's it. Right, there it is. This is the abridged translation of my book, Winning is Healing. Yeah. And it's, the title in German is Das Lächeln der Freiheit, which means the, the, the smile of freedom. The smile of freedom. The, the original title is Winning is Healing, and the abridged version in English is called Winning is Healing Basics. Now, they couldn't use that in German. Why? Because Winning is Healing is Siegen Heilt. Do you know what that is? Uh, the Nazi war salute, Sieg Heil. Yeah. It means Hail Victory. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but just as in English, Heil and, and Health, Holiness, Heal, Hail, as in Hail, 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 Hail Hello. They all come from the same root, and the same root in German and in English. So Siegen Heilt is a Nazi war salute. Couldn't title my book, The Winning is Healing. So they looked around. They found a, cha a phrase in the chapter on self-defense where I say, when somebody repels the attack that defeated them originally and traumatized them through their own efforts ethically and with compassion and power, they sit up with the smile of freedom. I sort of tear up every time I think of that. Yeah. Because the smile of freedom is what they title. It's a much better title than mine. I tend to go for nuts and bolts. And so that's it. What, what I'm going for is that, that feeling, that not feeling only, that skilled way of being and acting. And so safety is, is not, to me, a feeling of being safe. You get drunk enough, you feel safe all the time. But you're not. Right. I can give you long answers to short questions, can't I? Yeah, I, I, I don't know where to go from here. I was just um, protecting through feeling. Through feeling, I actually said this earlier. If you if you can't hurt people, how can you help them? Right. And I think that's well, that's strange. But what I meant was, if you can't bear being the um, the stimulus to evoke people's pain, then you can't help them through it because there's nothing nothing there. If I can't attack you, how do you learn to defend? Right. If I can come in with a decent attack, and then you have something to learn to protect yourself from. Do you want to sit back down and do some more exercises? Yes. Yes, lovely. Um, one, there's one thing maybe that we can yeah. discuss. Um, a number of people have said that they were very surprised by my ability to be with my Parkinson's, not dislike it, be open about it. 
So I say it. And that's okay, you have to accept. What does acceptance mean? How would you define it? This is funny, I just read a little thing about acceptance this morning on mm -hmm. this little card. That's how I... From my sister. Yeah. Um, acceptance is saying this is okay as it is. Mm -hmm. you know? Say it. Yeah. May I, may I touch you inappropriately? No. What the, you didn't accept that, did you? No. How would you accept that statement? Accept the statement? Yeah, the first year. By responding to it? Oh, how would you respond? By saying no. No, that, you can say yes or no, I don't care what you say, but that's not the definition of acceptance. Touch my shoulder inappropriately. Inappropriately? Yeah. Like by punching it? Oh, whatever. What did I do? You didn't do anything. That's acceptance. To open the body and keep it open, no matter what happens. Touch my shoulder again. Am I accepting it? You looked a bit flinched. You looked yeah. a bit scared. Touch my shoulder again. Am I accepting it? It looks like you're about to fight me. Yeah, right. I can tighten up with anger. I can tighten up with fear. I can tighten my sense of perception by numbing or dissociating. But it, what I, the, the, the commonality that I, I, I name it smallifying. If I become smaller and try to not be there or try to dominate, I'm not accepting. Touch my shoulder. I'm just, it doesn't change me. No, I choose to stay here. This is kind of a dangerous exercise. If you don't do it right, you'll, you'll injure me. Can you slap me across the cheek, staying away from the eye, the ear, the throat, anything difficult, slap me, please. Not too hard. We'll see how we calibrate it. That's not a slap. <laughs> I know, I'm nervous. Slap a little hard, but stay off the eye. A little hard, okay. One more. Yeah, but what do I do with my breathing? Well, I stopped breathing. What did I do with my breathing? I think you kept breathing, probably. Try one more on the other side, make it even. Hey, a little hard. <laughs> yeah. Do I stop breathing? Did it change much? It's kind right. of. I didn't notice you. I shut my kept eyes. Breathing. Just to keep. Maybe that's why I thought you stopped breathing. Right, try again. We'll see. Not slapping me. Yeah, that's a slap. Do I stop breathing? No, I okay, think you kept breathing. That's acceptance. You open your body and keep it open. Is it a spiritual thing? I don't know. I've never seen a spirit. Okay, I'm going to touch you inappropriately. May I? No. What happens when you say no? I feel pretty strong about that. I feel pretty safe. What do you do in your body? I guard. Well, that's not being strong, is it? That's <laughs> flinching. You want to know the, the functional answer? I felt like there was like a, this actually, it wasn't like I was freezing. Right. It just felt like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on. Like I'm, I'd become more aware. Show me what being on looks like. Well, it's an internal state. Of, show it to me anyway. All right, what do you do with your eyes? Owl eyes. <laughs> Are they looser or tighter? They're looser because I... I yeah, I'm not saying them. wider or narrower. I'm saying mm -hmm. looser or tighter. Looser because I feel like that helps. Are you blinking? No. Then they're tighter, you're holding the muscles. Oh. Let your eyes blink. And what is, does that feel looser or tighter now? It feels looser. Then you were tightening in response to the attack. Okay. May I touch you inappropriately? No. What are you doing in your belly? Probably tightening a little. Probably. What city are you in right now? Columbus. You sure? You're probably in Columbus. Probably. You, know, you know you're in Columbus, but you're probably tightening your belly. What does that say? That I'm not really in tune. Okay. May I touch you inappropriately? No. What did you do then? You sort of did something strange. I stood, up. I stood more straight. Yeah, let's try something. Straight is a bad word. There are no straight lines in the there body. There are no straight lines. I stood, I stood more... more vertically? Um, Poss hmm? Vertically? I was like this, a little more unstable, and then I stood more, more balanced. balanced. Okay. How about say yes? Yes. May I touch you inappropriately? No. Wrong answer. Try saying yes. Oh, yes. May I touch you inappropriately? Yes. What does that do in your body? It's relaxing. Yes. Why? I asked the why question. Why is it more useful and more more appropriate, more helpful to say yes when you really mean no. Because it keeps me open. 
-hmm. to myself. Yeah, you're frying the word instead of going out, spinning off into narratives about what, what he's going to do and what that means and what it's going to do to you in the future. You're, you're just cutting through the, the shit by saying yes. And there's an undercurrent of, ask me, t come and touch me inappropriately. Try it, please. What do you feel when I say try it? Try to touch it inappropriately? Yeah, like, it. I'm like, is that hard? Is this, I don't know. I'll try again, I'm start back there. Okay. <clears throat> and now soon you come and touch me inappropriately. Announce it, please. Announce it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, I'm going to come touch you inappropriately. Is that an announcement? I'm going to come touch you inappropriately. Try it, please. What do you feel when I say try it, please? That I'm not going to succeed because uh, you say try. Yeah, exactly. And there's more than that. I'll show you what more there is. Say it again. Announce it, please. I'm going to come touch you inappropriately. Don't. Say it again. I'm going to you come touch you inappropriately. If you're angry or afraid or numb, what's the message? You're weakly and I don't think you can stop me. Right. And if I say, say it again, please announce it. I'm going to come touch you inappropriately. I think that would be very interesting. What do you feel when I do that? I feel like I'm questioning myself. Yeah, like right. maybe this person isn't the right person. Yes is usually the better answer for something you don't want because you accept it. It's freaky. It's a strange logic. I don't mean it is. It's not workable because it's logical. It's workable because it works. Most people, when they say yes, it becomes easier for them. Because they're more... Yeah, they're more out. They're not, they're not trying to escape. Is that, you said the smiling, um, Sm uh, smiling heart, smiling heart being freedom, you use the word freedom, or in healing, I'm curious about this, you, why is it important to not call this healing, well, or to call it healing? What? Well, it depends what you mean. The, the simple answer is if you call it healing, somebody's going to bust you for doing medicine without a license. Yeah. But the more complicated answer is, I think of healing as a process of becoming whole. The etymology, as I say, hal, I don't know how you say it in Anglo-Saxon, but simple word H-A-L is the etymological foundation for heal, holy, holiness, health, and hello. And so it's all bound up together. So if healing is the process of becoming whole, this is certainly a process of becoming whole. If healing is a process of curing illness, I'm not curing anybody's illness. I'm not competent to do that. And I mean, I know that you said that what you do, what, like this work isn't, you wouldn't call it that, but I call think it what? Healing? healing. Yeah, because it, is, it, it leads to problems if you call it healing. Yeah. People and come who have illnesses that I shouldn't touch. And I say, I don't, I don't want them coming to me for that. Yeah. There's... I just think what's happened in my experience mm -hmm. is that healing has happened and I didn't know that that's, that this is what it felt like, mm -hmm. like to be made whole again. And so I'm wondering, because I've worked with this, um, like we were talking, I went to wilderness awareness right. school and I've done a lot of sensory awareness practices uh -huh. and I think I've experienced healing I'm sure without have. knowing like this work and body yoga principles and just everything that I <clears throat> feel like I've pieced together yes. has caused healing to happen that I didn't know would feel this way. Like is I feel. healing a noun or a process, a verb? So you were speaking of healing as a thing. Well, I was going to ask if the, the coming back to wholeness, that's a, a theme that I've right. found it within my journey is like, so what, what are the, what is that? What is wholeness? Like when we talk about like, my awareness going here. I mean, we've done awareness practices where you we think can. Wholeness is a thing that can be defined. Yeah. Wholeness why would you say that? It's a series of behaviors. It's okay. A, it's a way of living. Okay. There can be different behaviors in different people, but in essence, I would say it's compassionate. It's how do I say this? It's compassioning. It's loving. It's powering. It's awarenessing. You know what I'm saying? It's a way mm -hmm. of doing things. It's not something you have or get. You don't go to a, a, a wholeness store. And I like two pounds of wholeness <laughs> and a pound of compassion. It's a serious behavior. What is peace, for example? We're, we're working on peace in the world. What is peace? Yeah. 
it's not the absence of war. True. It's, it's yeah. it, feel, it feels like an internal state. It is partly. Um, you're, you're thinking English again. Yeah. I don't speak the language. To me, peace is a series of behaviors that you've either learned or come to naturally, and you use them. You say, which behaviors? I can specify. But if somebody says, I'm peaceful, is it, which, which behavior would you focus on? The, the language or the, the, the body actions? The body. Okay, so being being doing, our primary doing, language. Doing, not being. Well, the language doing our, well, what is language? Because, I mean, most of the, what they've even said about verbal communication is that most of that's body related. Yeah, true, well, but I'm trying to say the body is not an object. What you communicate in the body is not an object. What you communicate with the body is not, ob not an object. It's a series of actions. So if I come up and say, Hi, my name is Paul. What actions am I doing? A lot of them. Can you feel? What can you feel? What actions can you feel? I say, I'm Paul. What's your name? I please? can feel your, your handshake. Mm -hmm. I can feel... That's me shakes too, but that's a different question. <laughs> um, I guess from the ground, maybe. Yeah. Movements on your feet. Okay. If I say, I'm Paul, how do you feel now? I don't really, I don't feel your hand anymore. I don't Neither feel do I. any energy from you at all. Okay. If I say, hi, I'm Paul, what's your name? <laughs> what's that feel like? I kind of lost myself there for a minute. Uh, you, you can't reframe that in terms of behaviors. Losing yourself, I know more or less what you mean as a poet, a poetic yeah. metaphor. What do you do to lose yourself? I, Where's yourself? Myself becomes a little less, I'm, I lose feeling uh, in myself. In yourself? Tell me yourself. From my, in myself. Where is the self? Well, I don't think so. I was thinking more about you. Well, then, like, what is this threat that's, then, that's coming? Then you're paying attention to me more right. than paying attention to your body. Yeah. Is that a specific, concrete way of saying I lose myself? Losing myself feels like... I feel, yeah, pay, what do you do? I do... You put your attention on me and not on you. Right. So why do people use these strange poetic metaphors? Once, once, if you lose yourself, how do you get it back? Help, help, where's myself? If you put your attention on me instead of on you, what's the clear solution? To bring awareness back to me. Yeah, exactly. And that... If you use language which focuses on actions and behaviors, then it's pretty clear what you have to do. If you use language which focuses on metaphorical nouns, that's why everybody gets so confused. They're not yeah. looking at what they're doing. They're trying to achieve a thing. I don't know how you achieve peace if it's a thing. If it's a series, show me, I'll, I'll attack you, man. Yes. If you weren't so fucking stupid, you'd have better answers. Is that a series of behaviors? There were behaviors involved, yes. Not involved. Was my attack a series of behaviors? Yes. Which ones? Be behaviors? Yeah, which is specify them. Moving. Moving speaking. where? Moving where? Moving towards me. Yes, in what way? Aggressively. Okay, aggressively. You were like, you were like. Yeah, right, now I know. What, okay, that shows me something very clear. Yeah. And what else was constituted my attack? The tone of your voice. Yes, and what else? The, your, the words you were speaking. Okay, you see, that's specific. I know what you mean. You know what you mean. If you say you intruded on my space, I don't know, which space is that? What is intrusion? What is space? It's a place where uh, Captain Kirk went and nobody else had gone there before. Kept where? Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. We have, we're going to a space where no, in the first program, no man has gone before. By the second, there was no person had gone before. Anyway, see what I'm saying? If you think in terms of actions and behaviors, you know what you're doing and you can change them. Hmm. If, and you can perceive what people are doing not by some global intuition. You can train yourself. Uh, let's try something. Okay. May, this is not an attack. May I hold, hold your hand up, please? I'm going to grasp your wrist, may I? Yes. I'm going to think of a direction that I want to pull you or push you or twist you. Feel yourself. Let yourself relax. Let your core hang loose, but hold your hand up. If you let it go limp, you can't feel anything. I feel it's limp. <laughs> Hold it up there. Yeah. Now, where do I want to move you? Toward me or what? Toward me or toward you? Yes. 
How do you tell? Because you can feel it. I can feel it. And where do I want to move you now? Yes. Yeah. And what do I? This is more complicated. What do I, what do I want to do now? Yes. Yeah. It's a twist. Let me show you something. I know you've done this exercise at some point. Let's see. Where is a pen? That's not a pen. Well, yeah, I'll pretend this is a pen. This is actually my mascot. It's Terralong. I recognize him. Terralong the dotted lion. Terralong. You've met him before? Yep. Most people have, but they don't remember. Every time you fill out a coupon, what does it say at the bottom? Terralong the dotted lion. <laughs> Let me put that hand here. Back up a bit, please. Can you see that on the stream? No, no, maybe closer to the couch. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Right. Okay. Put it over here. Now, can you all see Tara Long? Yep. Good. I see I Tara Long. Look at Tara Long over there and want him. Hmm. And don't move and don't not move, just want him. Maybe I should stand here. <sighs> has to be a genuine wanting. Yeah, what happens when you want the creature? What happens posture? Uh, yeah, feel it? Yeah. What happens? I'm actually trying not to, but it's just happening. Because you're committing to the intention to move forward, your body does it. Yeah. Have you ever driven down the street and you're you come to a yellow a light, you come to a light, it turns yellow, if it wavers back and forth between the brakes and the gas? That's, have you ever felt that? Yes, yes. What is that? That's sending two messages, incompatible messages, to two sets of muscles. And they don't know what to do until you decide. So yeah. what, were we, what were we doing just now? When I grasp you, I'm exerting an intention to move someplace. And you can feel the micro-movements. Where do I want to go now? Feel? Yeah, right. But don't lean. Mm -hmm. Come with me, but don't let me, don't lose your balance. Feel? Go with it, help me. Feel? So that's the beginning of an Aikido throw. Grasp, grasp my wrist. Two hands, I guess. And stay balanced and decide where you want to move me. Push, pull, whatever. What I'm feeling is this. Is that it? It felt like you were doing a rotation that way. Were you? It was kind of up, yeah. So do, do it large. Okay. That's what I was, I was feeling, that rotation. Now, sometimes you'll feel the opposite side of the sphere. You can't tell which, is, mm. the, which side you're feeling, but it's the whole sphere of the moves. You know, Winston Churchill said... What did he say? We have nothing to sphere but the, the sphere, sphere itself. Right. And move, move me in some other direction, please. And this oh. is very micro-moving. Yeah. Don't shut your eyes and look up, because then you're doing yeah. something else. Where do you want to move me? Can you tell? Are you wanting to move me? Mm -hmm. It feels like you're coming this way, but not really. There's no intensity to it. Okay, now you want to go that way. <laughs> Feel? Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have to move strongly, but you have to decide, I really do want to go there. Intention. I'm taking that. Intention. Yeah, okay. No. It's, so it's clear intentions. Yeah. Well, here we go again. That creates clear movement. Yeah. Am I more or less on target? Mm -hmm. well, this one feels confusing. It feels like you're doing this. Yeah, I was. <laughs> you, you left your hands, you went to your shoulder. Now you're on this shoulder. Yeah. So think about some part of your body and pull me or push me from that part of your body. Hold strong. You can't move me. Hold strong. There. Now think of some part of your body that you're going picking up. This is that relation. Left toe. Yep. I don't know how I do this. I just do. <laughs> I've been doing this stuff for about 50 years. I've developed most of these exercises myself. Not too many people work with this that I'm aware of. But my how do I express it? There are wine tasters, I'm told, who can tell you the grape variety, the vintage, the, where it was grown, etc., etc., from just a little sip of wine. To me, it's all spoiled grape juice. So if you spend 50 years studying something, you're bound to notice things that many people will miss. Yeah. It's in there, but I found ways of getting people to, to experience it very quickly. So let me try something there. Yes. You got a question. Because, well, I was going to ask, because, um, you practice, mm -hmm. and because most people have an intuitive sense, oh. or some kind of sense about, I mean, like, a lot of people would call this 
have other names for like tuning into the energies of people's intentions and like the... Yeah, I know, but the question is can they specify what they mean so that somebody who doesn't know how to do it can learn it quickly. If I say, can you extend your key to the ends of the universe, what would you do? Do you even know what that means? I don't know what that it's means. It's an Aikido slogan from certain styles of but Aikido. I've, but I've definitely been in meditations where you, you know, they guide your awareness too far above, yeah, the earth. Yeah, but and if I say, but what does that, it, what I'm saying is, if you say to somebody who doesn't know how to do it, who's a beginner and never has done it, extend your energy out to there, so they know how just by being told how? No. That's naming it. If I say, well, the feeling that I have is named Millicent, I say, do Millicent. You don't know how to do it until I've broken it down so you can do the actions in your body. I see a lot of trouble with the peace movement, with all kinds of good movements. People don't know how to communicate. They don't, they don't know how to break things down into actions in their body that they can teach and other people can reproduce. So if you can't do it, you can have the best intentions in the world, in a sense, normal sense of intentions, but you can't do anything with it. You, know, you haven't been shown how. So this is what I want to work with people who, or I, I want, so here's the story. Yeah. Here's the story, is that um, I was in your workshop in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. and I, there was this gentleman there who was wiser than me. How do you know? He was uh, older than me, like twice my age, maybe. Well, I'm twice your age too. Doesn't mean I'm wiser than you. No, but he he had he had a lot more life experience, and he I was the young mouthy person at the table who was just angry about the state of the world, and honestly, I I didn't grow up in like a liberal social justice type right. environment, and so a lot of I feel like my perception of this movement is a lot of angry people yes. and I never I didn't def, I didn't identify that way but I was coming off that way because of the things that I feel and what I was saying and probably my body language right. and everything and he stopped me and was like you know things used to be a lot worse um, and they will be worse again and yeah he, he told me some stories about like there's things that my generation um, I don't, yeah, we're take not aware granted. of, or we take it's for granted a, a because, history. because your generation did all this work, and, you know... Sort of. Sort of, and yeah. you had, you brought up things culturally that we're now, we're still, we, we have a lot to thank you for. Um, so, but, 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 the, but, 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 but mm -hmm. your turn, you but first, then I'll but. But, we are now learning tools to help people like me not be so angry that our message gets diluted yeah. in it's not being heard I mean I was just watching protesters being drug off the street because they're making other regular people mad and I just think that's such a bummer because now we can't have a conversation and maybe protesting and some of it is I mean it's a it's a beautiful <laughs> right that we have to protest yeah, for the time being yes until we need actual tools for actual change because people need I need ways of being in my body that are safer that allow me to express but what I really want to see in the world which isn't more anger it's not and also more to, to feel okay when other people express angrily what they want totally you can't you can't meet anger with anger to create no anger. Right. The, the, my take on it is the hippies in the 60s had basically two themes, transcendence and ec ecology. They may not have called it that, but they wanted to live decently in community on the land. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have the tools. The whole Earth catalog, have you ever seen that? No. I think I might have a copy here. Let me see. Yeah. So, so this is essentially my question is, what are the tools that That's a good question, my right? young, angry generation can use yeah. um, to do this well so that we can actually take some of what your generation worked so hard for that we continue to work hard for? Well, the problem that I saw 
And, re- and I can say it now in retrospect, it's one of the strange things that happened on the bookshelf. Wow. This was the whole Earth catalog. It was a catalog? A, they yeah. mail that out? Yeah, it was, it's a catalog of catalogs. What? It's billed, it no. was billed, this is before the computer. It was billed as if you want to be a hippie, if you want to be going back to land. Shadow government. If you want to do anything, this gives you the catalogs and the, and the stuff to, t- to tell you how. Newsletters. Okay. Dying, 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 uh, dying, quilting, dying and quilting, sort of related, I guess. Um, solar hardware. Technology home, home repair. repair. So if you're a hippie and don't know shit about living on your own back on the land, get one of these where you buy tools. Yeah. There's a catalog of catalogs. And notice what the tools are. They're objects. Gardening. Uh, or whatever. It's an important section. Um, baskets, they're objects. They had a little bit about meditation. Leather, metal, ceramics, woodworking, old houses, log houses, house design, architecture, wood heat, wind, solar. What cool. they neglected was what I've spent the last 50 years trying to achieve, trying to create tools for living in power and compassion. Because that's the foundation. You can have all the pliers you want, but if you can't get along with other people and yourself in a spirit of love and power, then you can't use any of those tools effectively, effectively to build a new civilization. You just build new buildings. So I have felt that my job, I didn't realize this at the time, my job has been to spend 50 years, 52 years now, um, putting the tools together and, and creating them. What I've shown you here is some of them, and they are basically very simple. Awareness of the core of the body, feeling the, the loosening the tongue, loosening the throat, loosening the belly, loosening the pelvic floor muscles, loosening the whole body. Breathing softly and fully without any particular agenda. You don't breathe for five seconds in, three seconds out. You can if you want, but it's a very different thing. Breathing fully and gently, integrating love and power, which is problematic because if they're the same, how can you integrate them? You can integrate your awareness of them, in integrating your ability to intend and commit, posture and movement. A little funny for me at this point to say posture, considering my Parkinson's has stolen half my posture, but it's okay. I'll get it back someday. So those tools are very simple, they're very foundational, very, gym, very um, basic. And, um, Basic. And basic. Simple. And, I, I mean, breathing, like yeah. you just said with breathing. There are a thousand breathing tools and techniques out there. And when I hear people really get into, yeah. like, the things, and I, for me, it's just amazing just what awareness and bringing love into my breath will do. So let, your, let yourself hang loose inside. Feel comfortable. Now I'm, going to, I'm going to pick on you, lady, because you look so professional. Yeah. Okay. And those of you out there can try this as well. Bring your knees together. What does that do to your breathing? <sighs> Gets a little... Compressed? Yeah, especially okay. here. Okay. I keep these around for many things. May I? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Shall I use the simple... No, I'll use the simple phrase. Spread your legs. Uh, that's a loaded phrase I've ever heard. Well, what does that do to your breathing? Don't raise your chin. <sighs> Bring your legs together again, please. Bring your knees together. And tell me, no, I won't do what you say. No, I won't do what you say. No, spread your legs. Open your legs, open everything. Now say it. (gasps) No, I won't do what you say. How does that feel? Different? No, I won't do what you say. I'll do what I want. Say that. I'll do what I want. I'll do what I want. Bring your legs together. I'll I'll do what I want. Oh, I doubt myself. Yes. (laughs) I'm in full doubt. Wow. Because that's the fear startle response, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you coach people that are living in the fear startle startle response, guess what? They feel afraid and startled all the time. Duh. As somebody said. So it's it's very simple in a complicated way. And for easy, it wouldn't be so hard. 
right? But I see details, details, details. I'm, I'm a pointillist in the body. I see details, details, details. Put them all together, it's very simple. You achieve a state of power and compassion and you act. But that was what was missing from the hippie movement. Had some good music and a lot of good things. But uh, they didn't have the simple, replicable, teachable tools that would offer a foundation for mm -hmm. changing the civilization. And so as a result, we get angry protesters creating more anger. The one thing that came out of the 60s that I think about a lot, fighting for peace is like fucking for chastity. Exactly. It doesn't work. It doesn't. It's probably more fun fucking for chastity than fighting for peace, but they both don't work. <laughs> fighting can be fun sometimes. It depends. It's not useful. It depends. Um, it depends, right. Yeah. It's all the same except for where it's different. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so that's the title of my new book. It's all the same except for the differences. It's available on the website and it goes through all kinds of things from what? It's both a history of how I developed these techniques. It's, um, it's a, a, a book which shows people how you find the clue and you follow it. I didn't know I was going to do any of this stuff. I found a clue and I thought, and here I am. How to find a clue? Yeah, not how to find a clue, but once you find the clue, what do you do? You stick with it. You stick with the clue? Yeah, and it'll take you places. Is this in the body? Yes. Um, is this, are you talking about tracing? No, I'm not. That's close to it. Uh, the, the clue I found, I was teaching. Oh, stand up, please, if mm -hmm. you would. And may I grab your wrist again? Yes. By the way, to do this work, you do not need to be a martial artist of any sort. May I grab your wrist? Yes. Okay. What do you do when I, what would you as a normal person do when I grabbed your wrist? Most people would look at it. Oh, yeah. And when I was teaching people defenses, yeah. they would look at the wrist and try to defend themselves. Look at the wrist. What happens when you, what, what's your next movement? My next movement uh -huh. is to do that. Let me try to try it. to break away. Why? Because I don't like that you grab my wrist. That's where my awareness is, and I'm going to rip it off. That's the point. That's where your awareness is. Right. Put your awareness here. What does that do to your balance? <laughs> I don't. I have no awareness of my balance, so I, no I balance. just go where you take me. I said, why? Because your head is heavy. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a basketball made of oatmeal filled with basketball made of bone filled with oatmeal, right? I have extra bone. I have a heavy head. Yeah, right. So don't tip your head. Don't tip your head. Look down, but don't tip your head. Just aim your eyes down. What does that do to your balance? Mm. Still takes it, right? Oh, man, yeah. Keep your eyes level. Think... Don't tip your head. Think about your about the wrist. Put your awareness here. It takes your awareness, right? Yeah. So think about everything. Put your mind in all directions. Pay attention. What does that do? My feet changed. Yeah. My feet, I saw I, my awareness of my connection to the ground was right. stronger. So that was my Rosetta Stone. I've, I was puzzled, what can they be doing? They're not tipping anything. How can they possibly lose balance? I realized they were thinking down. They were thinking? They were thinking in the direction, in the the attack, direction. toward the attack. As soon as you mm -hmm. think toward the attack, yeah. you, lose your atta you lose your balance into the attack. Think in some other, here, I'll, I'll attack you differently. Where do you want to go? This way. How about you go there? You know, you're losing, you're, you're twisting yourself. Don't let me twist you. Okay. Twist me. Am I, are you twisting me? Twist you me slow. Twist me again. Same thing, show you something. Am I twisting? No. Move me somewhere else. Twist me, break it off. Okay. Right. Uh, Am I twisting? No, you're not twisting. Move me around. Am I who's twisting? Me or you? Do something slowly with both hands if you wish. And uh hang -huh. Who's twisting? Do I stay vertical and more or less in front of myself? Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean by that? Do you stay vertical? You seem to be staying vertical and now uh, you're not. Right. So twist me and take me off my vertical slowly. Do I let you take me off my vertical? No, you stayed. Vertical. I stay with you so you can't. If I resist you, you can. Take me off my vertical, two hands. Do something slow. What do I do? Am I losing my vertical? No. I choose not to. That takes training. Hmm. So what's my point? If you keep your vertical, if you keep your balance, then you deal with things. 
Those tools are necessary for conflict resolution. You just yell angrily. What do you get? You get loss of balance. Because your awareness is so out. Because your intentions are, are not full. You're not paying attention to the whole world. You're paying attention. Hold. What are you paying attention to right now as the attacker? This. And then you're vulnerable to that. Yeah. Pay yeah. attention to everything. You're paying attention to what's behind you? Mm-hmm. Why? There might be somebody back there. Right. See a pigeon? Yep. Pay attention up there. And you can tell what a pigeon will do. When you, when you move up, do you lose your awareness of the ground? You, you don't go. have to. Uh, I was asking whether you did. Oh. Did you? No. Feel the pigeon. It's flying over. Feel mm-hmm. When I do that, your attention goes to the pigeon. Yeah. Can you go down as well? Yes. Okay. Let me show you something. Let go, please. This is very easy to demonstrate in movement, especially in the Aikido movements. I have to put it all together for myself. I don't know anybody else teaching this stuff. For a beginner, when, when I teach how to raise the sword, you have to be careful if you're doing it indoors. Don't hit the ceiling or whatever. Do you raise your attention? Oh, that was the... <laughs> Do you raise your attention with the sword? Most people will as beginners. Yeah. If I cut and I let my attention drop as I cut, I'm off balance. Beginners I teach to raise the sword and drop the attention. To cut with the sword and raise the attention. Then I teach them to cut and feel all the horizontal so they can move. And once you're, once you're creating a sphere of awareness around yourself, then you can pay attention everywhere and cut knowing what you're doing without losing your awareness by doing it. Mm-hmm. So that, I think, is the basis of peace. Everything else is just narrowing. The basis of peace. It feels like it. It feels like... It feels peaceful. It feels peaceful. It is. To just hold the directions and it, to hold all of my senses and to hold openness to you, what's around me. Yes, I know what you mean. But do you hold awareness? No, but my awareness, you notice it what takes you did training. Your, yeah, of course. What did you do in your body when you said, hold my, my intention? It's, it, maybe, it, maybe it feels like a... You stiffened, I think, a little. Hold your attention. It's gripping. Yeah, it's gripping. gripping. Grip holding is gripping. So how can you grip to, to free yourself? Or maybe holding is not gripping. It's like the non-attachment yeah. of just like letting it rest here without... What is letting? It's accepting. Allowing right? acceptance, yeah. So you have to soften your body. This is... It is. So it is. So the language, if you acceptance. tell us about we've got to hold our awareness out, that holding is precisely the opposite of letting it be out. Okay. What are you mm. doing with your legs? Letting my skirt hold them apart. Together. Together. Oh, I promise okay. I won't look. That's okay. <laughs> we can raise the camera. Very mm, interesting good. exercise that I do with some of my clients, when, providing they're wearing pants. If they have trouble opening, I'll, at a certain point, I'll sit them down and spread their legs. I'll sit in front of them, talk to their genitals. Drives them nuts, but what's the problem? I'm being weird. Why are they feeling, feeling upset? Why are they feeling upset? Because they think they're unsafe. Mm. No, we, we, we can't actually do that. Well, we can, sort of. I'll we can sh- do, when, we can do uh, when I put on other Mary, clothes. you can put this on. That's when oh, I have okay. towels around. Okay. Very un, un- what? Impolite of me. Okay. Spread your legs, lady. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on, should we do the... You you can't see your head entirely. Should we back up? Let's back up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Spread your legs. Hello. (laughs) What do you feel when I do that? Awkward. Why? Because... I'm behaving like a jerk. Why do you have to make yourself feel bad? Why do I make myself feel bad when Paul Linden talks to my genitals? No, when I'm acting like a jerk, why do you feel bad? It's my problem, not yours. It is your problem. So why do, you, why do you make yourself feel bad? Because I've got a problem. Because I have a lot of shame around being you seen, have let shame, alone. You do shame. I do shame. And what actions do, are in your body that you're labeling doing shame? This. I want to do this. You want to tighten and compress? Yeah. Why? Because 
allow, like, opening myself up in that way to people. Is what? Is, I was going to say dangerous. In what, it's in not what way? always dangerous, I suppose. In what way? I could be embarrassed. Is that dangerous? It, I don't like being embarrassed. Well, it okay. keeps, it prevents me from doing a lot in life, fear of embarrassment. Well, why do you, why do you do embarrassment to begin with? Don't do it and you won't be afraid. No. Don't do embarrassment. You're saying I yeah. should control That's my behavior so you won't be embarrassed. How, how do I stop doing embarrassment? You don't. You start doing peace. You can't okay. stop any emotion. You have to start a better one. So what have we been investigating today that you could start to use to replace the embarrassment? Peace. Okay, open your body. Open your heart. Feel compassion and love. You'll feel yourself sitting powerfully on the floor, on the ground, on the chair. Does that feel different? Are you embarrassed now? No. Hey, may I talk to your genitals? I don't care whether you want to. Hello, genitals. <laughs> what do you do now? Are you still embarrassed? Are you uh, I definitely do this. I look up yeah, when I'm else? trying to dissociate. Yeah, from you look up my and you body. leave yourself precisely when you should stay there because mm -hmm. it might be dangerous. Right. Okay, so, what do your genitals have a name? Sarah. Okay. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> Hello. And what do you feel now? I feel pretty calm. And what can you do if you wanted to do something? You I kill me. I could do a lot. I you could. How could you kill me? Two different ways. Please don't. I could. How could I kill you? Yeah, right from this position. I could kick you. You kick me in the throat. Or you reach down, pit, pull my head, grab my head, and twist it hard and fast. Yeah. Sever my spinal cord. So who's in danger, me or you? What can I do in this position to you? Bite your ankle? Yeah. That's terrible. It sound, I could, you, I mean, you could, yeah, grab my feet. You could grab your feet. What but you see, do? my head, yeah, yeah right. you, you are so much more vulnerable than I am. Yes, that's the point. I'm acting like a jerk and making myself vulnerable, so you feel bad. Why? It's not fair or reasonable. Do I do this strange stuff? Yeah, because, because you being a jerk right now, you're focusing on being a jerk. And by me being like, okay, this guy's being a jerk, but because I feel peaceful. You're capable of dealing with I'm it. I'm capable of dealing with it. But it's, I don't know, how do you get past the, yeah, you asked me earlier how I feel, and I said calm, but really I felt like emotional and. What kind of emotion? Like sad. You didn't feel emotion, you did emotion. I did emotion, I what did, did. What did you do that you're naming sadness? It was like a, like tears and like my, like re, I don't know, hmm. Sadness is not what you were doing, it's it the name of what you were doing. Get it? It felt like I wanted to, like, cry. Like, yeah. that was the feeling, yes, like, I, I could start that's crying. That's a feeling. That's a real emotion that acts in your body. Yeah. Did you stop it, or did you start something else? Uh, I started, I started calming more. Okay, do calmness. Oh, now I feel really. <laughs> I, I do it, I look up, and I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have done it to this one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I, hello, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do now? You're going to kill me. Kick you. Right, so why is face. that a problem for you? It's a problem for me. Yeah. It's the <clears throat> moment. That's what I'm getting at, or I'm curious about is, it's just practice then. Is yes. that like, it's so I don't have to freeze. Because you've got it's, something you practice that's better. Yeah. So the question is not, Getting past that, like yeah. I'm gonna cry and collapse. That's okay, you cry and collapse. But also, but then, but then also. And yeah, then you also have to do something else afterwards. Yeah. Or can I can I hold that collapse and well hold not hold but. And you said I guess that's a part of me. That's the part of the wholeness. But the what is more true, mm -hmm. what I believe is that. I am capable, and I can find peace even in this situation. Yes, you can if you have the tools and have practiced. If I have the tools and I have practiced being <clears throat> triggered. Yeah. If I've practiced being if, triggered. If you've practiced not being triggered, if you've got a situation which has triggered you, and you practice mm -hmm. in that situation to do something better, you're replacing the old learning with something new and better. From my perspective, this is all very simple. Not easy, but it's very simple. But being triggered has such a negative connotation right now. I mean, that just that word, I feel like, is more popular. The word trauma, we're talking about these yeah, things right. more culturally than you we know, ever have. You know what trigger was? Gene Autry's, uh, I think it was Gene Autry's horse, was it Roy Rogers' horse? 
And, you know, you don't even know who Roy Rogers was. No. He was an early cowboy. Yeah. You've forgotten my history. I've forgotten your history? Yes, I don't know how you could have remembered it, but there it is. <laughs> I was born in 1992, Paul. I was born in 1945. Wow. That's a while ago. But my legacy, I hope, is this series of exercises that's founded on, based on a certain way of using language. And I think if you use language this way, you're much less prone to misunderstandings much more capable of replacing those negative states with more functional and more comfortable and helpful states. That's what I'm trying to teach. The language, you know, changing how the language is used combined with the these work. practices. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think you can do either one. I'm probably the only person in the, in the country who has a PhD in physical education who had, back when they were printed, two unabridged dictionaries on his desk. I'm a, I'm a strange language freak. Spent my whole life studying the body. I used to when I was. I had multiple dictionaries as a kid. I mean, I still do. It's just that I don't use books for dictionaries anymore. Yeah, no one does. <laughs> but um, you're, you're one of us. You're strange. I'm strange. That's I also it. like Pogo. So Pogo is excellent. <laughs> um, okay. Is this enough, or have we yeah. covered enough what territory? Else? I think we've covered enough for now. Is there anything else left to cover? Well, discussions about language, I feel like, could go on and on. It could. We could talk forever. Yeah. So we've talked about we've talked about safety. Mm -hmm. We've talked about perception mm -hmm. and threats mm -hmm. and being triggered. Um, and why not being triggered is act like being is, so being triggered is part of the process mm -hmm. and cha changing Natural the language. Natural part of the process, but it's not helpful. Um, so practicing finding an area that triggers you. It shouldn't be hard for most. It shouldn't of us. be hard, but then working with it, feeling it, and then practicing mo calmness and peace in that state, so that you can not be. Yeah, exactly. I um, call it frying the word. Right. If, if your uncle did something and you say, uncle, and <gasps> you have to create a state of calmness and peace and strength and practice saying uncle until it doesn't have any hold on you. Hmm. Yeah, we can do some of that. Sure. Um, yeah, anger, protection, love. Maybe, yeah, I want to talk about love more, but we can do that later. Um, yeah, humanity, shapes, we've covered a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing this umbrella covers a lot of stuff because it makes it very simple. Cover all kinds of things with one umbrella. That's why you make a big umbrella. Mm -hmm. OK. Sarah, thank you very much for understanding what I'm trying to create, for taking it as a gift, and for trying to help, trying to use it to help the world really appreciate that and appreciate the opportunity to contribute to your to the area in which you'll be using it. Thank you. Thank you for your work and for inspiring me to to take your life's work and to give people the tools to do this. Mm -hmm. I think it's the next. Thank you. Next it's it, it's a very special feeling to feel that the work I have done has been worth it as a gift to other people, not just for me, but to give it and have it, have it accepted. It's very nice. So let's keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep going. You did it, Sarah.